Steven. And I'm Will. And, and this, this is, is the Post B Chronicles. Chronicles. So, Will, what do we got today? Man, we got a great individual. Reggie Cole, a.k.a. Bursky Fit. Yeah, yeah. Bursky, what's up, bro? What's going on, man? How you what's doing? Going on, man? Thanks for having me. Man, thank you for coming, man. It's definitely a pleasure. So, this is Post P Chronicles, bro. So, tell us your story. Um, Well, you know, uh, I grew up originated out of Southeast San Diego. Um, it's crazy because my mom lived in Bay Vista and my dad lived in Skyline. So, <laughs> I kind of have both of those sides tugging at me. You know, yeah. I played football at Skyline, but then I went home from Bay Vista to Bay Vista. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I, I had a pretty cool childhood. I can't say it was bad or anything like that. I I, I pretty had a – pretty much had a good upbringing. You know what I mean? But the streets, um, they took a hold of me. You know what I mean? At a young age, running around, um, you know, getting into trouble. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say committing crimes, but, I mean, you know, just regular kid stuff. You know what I mean? Breaking windows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, and then the, the gang culture kicked in. You know what I mean? Um, and um, doing stuff with, that pertains to that. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but, you know, you know how that go. So let's go back to your upbringing real quick. You said... Went to school in Skyline, lived in Bay Vista. Were your parents divorced? So you were yeah. going two different places? Yeah, well. So your dad was in Skyline, mom's in Bay Vista? Yeah, so yeah, my parents was pretty much never together. <laughs> I can't remember them being together, you know what I mean? It was probably just one of those things. But um, yeah, no, I played football for Skyline, Pop Warner. And um, yeah, I lived in, in Lincoln Park. Went to school in Lincoln Park where, uh, with my mom. So I just kind of like back and forth. Between my dad and my mom. How was your dad as like a, a role model? Was he always present? Um, was he non-existent? Uh, not so much. I mean, he, he was around. You know what I mean? Uh, I was fortunate to have a big family on, on my dad's side. So my grandma, my aunts, my uncles. My grandma had nine kids. You know what I mean? Mm. So I got a lot of love there. You know what I mean? But my dad cousins. was yeah. My dad was off doing whatever, but. He was there and he wasn't there. Like you I would say this, he was just there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So obviously for people who don't know, that's like a tale of two cities growing up in Bay Vista and growing up playing football in Skyline and having to go back and forth between those two and just to, you know, shed a little light on that. You wanna shed a little light on that? On how how difficult that can be at times? Um, I mean, yeah. Because like I said, you got the gang culture tugging. You right. know what I mean? So it wasn't something that I chose. It kind of chose me. You know right. what I mean? So I was just one of those kids that was just like um, outlandish and full of life to where people gravitated towards me, so to speak. You know what I mean? So uh, I pretty much had to choose. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, I chose where I was living. Right. More or less, you know what I mean? I was only visiting in Skyline, you know what right. I mean? I lived in Lincoln Park, so there you have it there. But, um, yeah, no, nah, it was definitely difficult. But I'm glad it, it happened that way because I was able to um, grow in men, uh, relationships on both sides to where, you know, I got homies over there, I got homies over there to where the gang stuff really didn't matter. Right. You know what I mean? It was, you know, real – quote unquote nigga stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it real, you know what right. I mean? Don't switch up. You know what right. I mean? If you mess with somebody as a person, keep it that Respect way. Respect them as a man. Yeah, don't switch it up because of a color or a gang. Okay. So you're not going back and forth two faced like Nah, um, nah, yeah, I don't do I don't do that stuff. Nah, not at all. All right. Okay. So now you tell us you're playing football, you live in, you made the decision, you start game banging. What happens? You know, like, how, what is what is your life looking like? And um, what when did you make this decision? Uh, like I said, man, I, I kind of really didn't make the decision. It kind of just happened. Like, um, I was in the sports, like I said, playing sports, playing football and stuff. And then it kind of just, like, people just labeled me, you know what I mean, as this. Right, put it on you. Yeah, to the point so, like, where. like, you're going to put it on me, yeah. I might as well just yeah, and that, not and that's have what it was. It's like, right. So if you grew up in San Diego, Southeast, 
if people know your first and last name, you you well know. Right. And Reggie Cole is just one of those names that run. You know what I mean? So, well, people will say, "Oh, Reggie Cole and and Wooty Whoop and them was there." Or Reggie Cole and them, like my name would just always ring to where it just ran with Lincoln Park. You know what I mean? Right. So. I was I was pretty much labeled. I didn't have to make the decision, you know what I mean? Made it for you. Yeah, pretty much. Was that difficult? Uh not really. It was fun. <laughs> it really was, man. Um That's the unfortunate thing. Yeah, it was, man. Yeah. Like I said, I had a good childhood. Like I wouldn't change it for nothing, man. Right. You know what I mean? Like like I said, I wasn't a super bad kid, but I was in the streets. Right. You know what I mean? So did the streets lead you to incarceration, to juvenile hall, to why like what you know what happened? Um, yeah, a little bit. I went to juvenile hall a couple times. Okay. I wasn't never big on like incarceration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that wasn't me. I was able to tiptoe around that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I that wasn't for me. I I, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> I like to be out. Ah, oh, that's see that right <laughs> off top. That just sounds smart to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he it, caught on early. Yeah, he caught on real early. You know, because yeah. I know people who haven't caught on, and I'm sure we all do. And they yeah. they just keep going They've back and keep and going back since their childhood. Juvenile yeah. hall, juvenile jail, hall, prison. YA jail, yeah. print. Like man, you just trying to touch every single step yeah. of this. Yeah. You know, like I don't know what you're trying to achieve, yeah. <laughs> but you're doing it. You know, but at the same time. I also know people who haven't gone to prison, but they're still doing the things that'll take them there. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you made the decision not to. So it's not just that you're not going to prison. You also made a decision like, you know what? I don't want to be doing this stupid stuff or, you know, so when, when did you make that decision? Yeah. Was juvenile hall like a wake up call for you? Uh, not really. It, like- uh, it wasn't really juvenile hall. Um, Really, me in the streets, uh, it took a big turn for me when I was shot in my face. Mm. Um, And it was done by somebody that was close to me, somebody I grew up with. So my trust issues went through the roof, you know what I mean, to where I just wasn't comfortable, you know what I mean? Um, It's crazy because I literally had to learn to trust all over again, you know Mm. what I mean? But... It took a big turn for me then. Uh, one, my daughter, and then that. You know what I mean? So my daughter was born first, and then that happened. So let's talk about that real quick. You, you got this the scar. Yeah. I'm assuming that's where you were shot in the face. What transpired that led to someone shooting you, obviously? Man. Try, sounds like an attempted murder, right? Yeah. Okay, so what happened? What transpired? Um, you know, it's something I really don't talk about a lot. You know what I mean? Um, but... It was just, it was crazy because I was just walking with my friend, who I thought was my friend, you know what I mean? He just pulled a gun out and shot me. <laughs> it was really so no, that simple, No disagreement, man. no argument? Nah, man. It was, it was like, you know what I mean? I think drugs probably took a, a, a major impact on that situation, you know what I mean? Certain drugs people take to where they mind go crazy or whatever. I mean, I can't really say, you know what I mean? But it really was that simple to where... I was just walking with my so-called homie, and he pulled out, bam. You know, I'm like, damn. What'd so, you get shot with? Uh, a sawed-off shotgun. You guys. What? Bro. Yeah. What? Yeah. And that actually ended up working better for me because it was so close range. Because um, might Yeah, have farther been away, your head would have been yeah. explode like a water Or maybe it been a slug. It probably would have went and did a different effect. But just the, the glare, just... I turn and just split my face. You know what I mean? So when that moment you get sawed off shotgun, shot in the face, you fall to the ground, do you run? Does uh, the guy assume you're dead? That's why he doesn't take another shot? Uh, what, what happens? Yeah, man. I, I took the shot, man. You know, I had been drinking. It was a lot going on that night. Um, my adrenaline was going. So I don't remember if I fell or not, but I know I took off running. I took off running. I don't know what he did, but I took off running. I went to my boy house where I was just at. And my first thing was retaliation, you know what I mean? And my boy was like, nah, man, like, you need to go to the hospital. Your face is open. <laughs> like, my face is open. Like, nah, I, I knew I was going to be okay. Like, I could feel it. Like, it wasn't nothing to where I felt like, oh, my life is, just, you know what I mean, about to be over. It wasn't nothing like that. It was more or less like, nah, I, I got to get this dude, you know what I mean? But 
everything happens for a reason. I feel like that's the reason that, you know, my life turned for the better, really. So that's when you're like, this, this ain't worth it? It ain't. I mean, that shotgun didn't put my eye out, but it opened it, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, so to speak, like, to what's really going on, you know what I mean? Because if I feel like I'm a cool dude and, and I, I did what I was supposed to do as far as, you know, the neighborhood and my homies, stuff like that don't happen to you. But I was wrong. Right. It's really the reason why it happened to me. You know what I mean? I feel like jealousy is big growing up in neighborhoods like that. Um, you being more fortunate than, you know, other people. And they see that. You know what I mean? So. Reggie Cole's a big name out there now. I mean, hey, man. Yeah. What could I say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. And, you know, you said one other thing that really, that really woke you up. And that was your daughter. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Um. Well, yeah, that's my baby, man. She she changed my life for the better. Uh, just her being born, just it wasn't just about me no more. You know what I mean? It was about somebody else, somebody that depended on me. You know what I mean? And like we said earlier, my dad wasn't really there, there to the point where I saw other kids, other, you know what I mean, fathers playing the role, you know what I mean, to where, like, damn, I didn't have that. Not that it made me, like, spike for anything but i wanted to be better you know right. what i mean so uh from that day she was born man it was it was me and her you know what i mean and, um i took that that responsibility with, like with honor you know what i mean and and i put forth you know what i mean to raise my kid you know what i mean so everything you did from that point on was for your daughter and pretty much i know you know and I'm pretty sure everybody knows a lot of individuals that say, oh, I'm a good dad. Mm-hmm. I'm a good dad. Yeah. But yet you're doing the things that take you away from your kids. Yeah. You're still out there hanging out. So how could you really be a good father? Yeah. yeah. Or your yeah. father, right? He was there. That doesn't make him a good dad, right? Yeah, no, for real. Yeah. yeah for Just real. being present does not, not make enough. you a good dad. 100%. Parent. Uh, real quick, how old were you when you had your daughter? Uh, 20. 20. Yeah, I was 20. Yeah. Man. That's a lot for a young guy. Yeah. Not only that, I mean, at this time, he just recently got shot in the face. Well, well she yeah, was, was one, after, right? Yeah, that was after my daughter. But after yeah. your daughter. So you, you have a young, you have a toddler, you got shot in the face. So, you know, you woke up. Yeah, it's time to change. It's time to change. It's That's time your time. aha moment. Mm-hmm. Now, after that aha moment, what's going on? Like, what job? Like, what, what are you doing in your life? Do you separate yourself from Bay Vista completely? You know, and focus on, or are you still going, like, still going back over there, still hanging out, um, lightweight, like, what, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, I mean, initially, yeah, I did. I, I separated myself because, like I said, my trust issue was big. Right. It was a lot of things going through my mind to where I couldn't trust nobody, you know what I mean? So, I separated myself, you know, completely. But uh, after time, I learned to trust again. Right. And there's certain individuals I grew up with that I, I couldn't turn my back on just 100%. because, you know what I mean? So, right. Um. Yeah, I, I, I still dibble and dabble. Um, you know, it, it made me who I am today. You know what I mean? So I, I never turn my back, so to speak. But I just deal with it differently. You know what right. I mean? It's not full core press. I'm older now. You know what I mean? You make those decisions when you're young to where you're not knowing what is what is what is building. You know right. what I mean? Like you're not knowing that these decisions right now is going to dictate your life 10, 20 years from now. You know what I mean? So if I had known that, I probably wouldn't have went that route. Not 100%. You know I mean? it's, so. it's funny how we make decisions as kids and we still live by them Just kind of, yeah. as 40-year-old men. And I and I trip off of that. I'm like, bro, you made a decision at 10, 11, 12. That's who you're going to be. That's who you're going to be. And be based on that, you feel like, I can't let this go. I can't let this go. Like, nah, you can. Yeah. It's okay. You know, yeah. like you know, like you know what you're doing makes no sense. Yeah. But because you like, oh, loyalty. What are you loyal to? You know, you just said you can't turn your back on them. And I told Steven, and I told most people, yeah, I'm from over here, but it's only in a positive sense. No, I can absolutely. only give back with positive energy and pull them up with me. You know, so I'm assuming that, that you're you on the no, same absolutely. path. Like these my homies, but only on a positive tip. Yeah, I mean, we, I'm definitely not preaching, you know, negative stuff or stuff that's going to retract, you know, a, a dude younger than me. You know what I mean? So, um, 
I'm definitely on the uplift. Yeah. Love, you're not uplift. partaking in that stuff nah, with him. Nah, nah, not at all. You know what I mean? So, yeah, just like you said, on the uplift side, you know what I mean? For yeah. sure. Now, I, th- we know you're really proud of being a father. You also said you've been a single father raising her basically by yourself. Yeah. How's that as a young man? Um, It's kind of cool, man. Uh, raising, a, raising a little girl, just certain stuff, you just, you know what I mean? You can't explain. It's 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 hard to explain. But uh, like I said, I wouldn't change it for nothing, man. Uh, my daughter, she's literally my best friend. You know what I mean? So we got that type of relationship to where, you know, um, for instance, when she was in middle school, she got her period. I'm the first person she called. Dad, wait, hold on. Something, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> something you know, ain't right. Yeah, and it's to the point where like I, I, I don't know what to do. With I'm like, man, I don't know what to do. With <laughs> you know what I mean? But, Let me call you back. <laughs> yeah. So it's just um, little stuff like that, man. Just made me grateful. You know what I mean? Being there to where I know she can count on me, and she knows that. You know what I mean? So it's cool. It's it really real is. Real blessings. No, for sure. Do that safe place for her. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm that rock. You know what I mean? And like I said, I take pride in that. And it all became, it all came from having a father that wasn't there and you wanted to be the opposite of what you experienced. Like, I never want my child to go through what I went through. Absolutely. And it's crazy how so many people go through that and just perpetuate the same thing over and over again. Or because that's all they know, right? The example that was set before them, they're like, well, this is all I know, or I turned out fine, so they'll turn out fine too, right? Well, it doesn't make any yeah. sense because if this is if you didn't like it, why would you put that on your you you hated that you wanted exactly. a dad you seen everybody else hanging out with their dad like why wouldn't you be there mm-hmm. you know so yeah it doesn't doesn't make no sense to me <laughs> yeah you know if I don't got a dad I wanna and I didn't like that I'm gonna be there for my kids you know yeah but like like you said um people you know only do what they're taught or what they what they've seen. So mm-hmm. that makes sense too. You know what I mean? But you can either learn from it and do the opposite or learn from it and go do roll with it. You know what I mean? So And your daughter's obviously been on the straight and narrow path. You wanna brag about her a little bit? Uh yeah, she ain't straight and narrow, but no, nah, she's definitely <laughs> a good kid, man. Uh, my daughter's a good kid. Uh, I got lucky with her. Um uh, she's an athlete, you know what I mean? Uh, we stay on the grades, but she slacks a little bit, you know what I mean? But we get her back on back on track to where she's excelling, you know what I mean? But uh, overall, she's a good kid, man. Uh, I can't really complain, you know what I mean, as far as um, her upbringing and, and how she carries herself and, and all. Like, I'm pretty proud, yeah, for the most part. It's crazy to me because some people, having a child is not enough for a wake-up call, right? A near-death experience is not enough for a wake-up call. And then you have you where you're like, all right, I got to straighten up. And it's just crazy the dynamics, how everyone else is rock bottom. Everyone else's aha moment is different. Mm -hmm. Like you could easily be just like all your other homies and be in prison right now, right? Mm -hmm. And just done everything they did. Or if you could have easily retaliated, if I got shot in the face, I don't know if I wouldn't have retaliated either. But it's those things were life-changing moments rather than pivotal moments for your downfall. So I think that's really cool to see. And that that says something about your maturity and your ability to see outside of yourself, where we were talking about last episode that nothing happens in a vacuum. So Mm. you could be selfish and do all these things for yourself and then not worry about the consequences. But you obviously from seems like a young age had the the whereabout and the self realization to be like, okay, this isn't worth it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, I mean, I think that's one of the main things that probably kept me out of prison is um, me being smart enough to march to the beat of my own drum, you know what I mean, versus following somebody or or um, letting somebody lead me down the wrong road. If I wasn't feeling it, I wasn't doing it, <laughs> period. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I kind of think that kept me, you know, cool and, and, and out of harm's way, so to speak, you know what I mean, when it comes to that. Definitely. So, yeah. man, you're doing amazing things. So, tell us about what you're doing, man. I um, see the shirt. I see the cup. What's going on? What's up? Yeah, yeah man. So, um, Bursky Fit, uh, the name, everybody likes to ask me where their name comes from. Um, one of my older homies, you know, a lot of slang in the neighborhood. Um, 
homies say all kind of stuff, but my one of my other homies used to use the name Burkham. So like, uh, I don't know where he got the name from, but he was like, oh man, you got a lighter? Yeah, it's over there in the little Burkham. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Burkham could be anything. You know what I mean? So it could be a female. It could be you know what I mean? Or you got a nice little Burkham with you, or you know what I mean? It could be whatever. To the point where he ended up passing. And when me and my, one of my other homies, we took the word and just, you know, started using it more and more and more. And I would say, like, you know, on my stories, on Instagram, Snapchat, and all this big Burkham, you know what I mean? Big, you know, big going big, you know what I mean? To where his spinoff is Bursky. Now, more or less, it means something good, you know what I mean? Like, if we having a, a nice plate to eat or you doing something good, all this big Big, big Bursky, you know what I mean? I would say it, you know what I mean? To a point where it just stuck. People started calling me. <laughs> the word I use, people started calling me. So um, that's where the name uh, originated from. And then um, I got into fitness probably the end of 2019, early 2020, um, when COVID hit. You know, the world changed pretty much. Yeah. And I started focusing more on my health and, and um, trying to get fit, you know what I mean? So uh, when I started, I was uh, around like 350. Oh, man, yeah. Like yeah, something like that. Big boy. Big yeah. boy. <laughs> and that um, wasn't just COVID with you. <laughs> that was big big eating, man. Big eating. Yeah, big big bursky. Yeah. Eating that bursky. <laughs> yeah, I'm catching on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I started working out and um, – the gyms and stuff was closed, and um, it was these stairs uh, around my place to, at the time where I was living, and I was just hitting them, like, every morning to the point where it became a thing five months later, six months later. I'm still doing it, and um, it started there really on those stairs, and then uh, one of my other homies, he was going to the gym in PB, and... um. They were getting trained by Rich, who was mm -hmm. on Coach Rich on the episode Rich last. Williams. Yeah, and um, actually, that's who I started training with first in the, in the beginning of my journey was Coach Rich, and it was different, man. <laughs> it was different. You know, I went to the gym before, but it was nothing like this. Like twenty four hour fitness and those other gyms is like BS when it comes to this type of stuff, man. Like it was just a whole new, you know, what I mean, thing for me, and um. I'm learning all this stuff from Coach Rich, and um, it's crazy. He was telling me stuff like I didn't even believe myself. Like, oh man, you're gonna be strong as hell, man. You gonna, you know, what I mean, this, this, that, and the third. I'm like, man, I could barely lift, you know, two twenty five a couple times. Like, you know what I mean? And um, he was telling, he saw something that I didn't even see myself, man. And I, um, I always give him his flowers as, as far as that, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I went on to start doing my own thing. Uh, training by myself, and then I, I started going to um, Stern's Gym, Stern's Gym. Uh, one of my other partners was going there, and uh, he was working out with this dude named Sid, uh, Jim Rilla. I don't know if you know him, mm -hmm. but um, that's actually where a lot of my passion came from as far as working out. It rubbed off from working out with him. <laughs> this dude, man, I mean, he really eats, sleep, like, the gym, like, it was on a whole nother level. And that started rubbing off on me to the point where I haven't looked back. You know what I mean? Every day I work out. It's hard to not work out. You know what I mean? So, You're in the gym almost all day sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Hours at the gym. Yeah, man. It's it's hard for me to leave that place because um, what I get from it is not really physical. You know, a little physical. Right. But it's more mental right. for me. Um, you know, built up progression and stuff I'm going through. I take it out on weights, and it's it works for me. You know what I mean. Some days I'm I'm having a rough day, or I could be going through anything, and I go work out. It's all gone. Like it don't even matter to me. You know what I mean. So, um, yeah, that's where my passion is now. Is just working out. So I just wanted to brand myself. So that's when I came with the Bursky Fit Man, and I'm just putting it on everything I can. Really. You know so what your mean? daughter training with you now too, right? Yeah, she she comes to the gym. She's on it. Uh, she runs track and stuff, so she has to be fit and 
And it's crazy. Her transformation is kind of good too. Like when she first came to the gym um, last year, to where she's at now, she sent me a picture like, "Dad, look at my legs." You know, I'm like, "Dang, it. that's big." You know what I mean? So <laughs> she's she's have some transformation herself. But yeah, no, it's cool, man. So how's the Bursky fit going? Uh, it's, it's cool, man. Like um, I'm loving the support I'm getting from it. Um, you know, I just started with clothes, t-shirts, and stuff to you know sweats and shorts, and you know I'm venturing off like you know cups. Um, I have a CBD cream. You know what I mean? Um, uh, weightlifting belts and straps and stuff. So it's going pretty good. I can't complain. Yeah, I noticed when you first came out with that shirt, everyone on the gym was rocking a bursty yeah. fit shirt. Yeah, I was man. like. That made me proud. From? <laughs> yeah, it's cool to see that. It's yeah. something that you've built. Like, I think the coolest thing about our gym isn't just, you know, we got a badass gym. The support in the community. Like, Absolutely. One trainer comes out with the shirt, everyone's going to buy Everybody it. Everybody buys it. Right? And I love that. Like, you came out with the shirt, the next, you know, the next two weeks, I see like 50 shirts. I'm like, yeah. oh, everyone's supporting this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, sure. it's cool. I love, I just love the community aspect of that. And that's got to make you feel proud. You're training. You see a guy with your shirt on, right? You know, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Shirt, your nah. belts, your wraps. Yeah. You own everything up in there. Yeah, it's big. It's big. <laughs> <laughs> it's big. But, no, nah, definitely the the gym, uh, like, total supports, man. Like, it's a beautiful thing. Like, I love that gym, man, on the, on the basis of that. Like, just the people, like, uh, like I was saying earlier, like, you don't get that type of stuff from, like, 24-hour fitness mm-hmm. and those other, like, BS gyms, man. It's it's on a whole nother level, you know what I mean? Like I said, when I started training at these type of gyms, that's where the passion came from. Like, it's easy to click, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you can't go back to the LA Fitness 24-hour nah, fitness. Once you, you experience this type of training, this type of environment, this type of community, you, you go can't. back and it's almost like a, a, a museum where it's just dead in there, right? <laughs> nah, I actually went to the 24-hour fitness, man, and I just walked out. <laughs> I couldn't work out, man. Like, they didn't have no music playing. It was just like. That's yeah, quiet. Yeah, it was like, man, the vibe just wasn't near. I told my boy, I was like, man, I'm gone. He's like, where are you going? I was like, I can't work out here, man. I'm going to try again tomorrow. You know what I mean? I went to this one gym one time. went to LA Fitness cells out of town. And it was freezing in there. Because they, like, they must not want people to work out hard and sweat. Yeah. I remember I was like, dude, I can't get a pump. He's like, what? I'm like, it's freezing here. I need a sweatshirt. And he's like, what? How do you train and not get injured in this? Because it's they're so worried about the the feeling good mm-hmm. rather than the environment and producing like results. It's like they don't want you to sweat. And I was like, hey, and the same thing. I was like, I'm out of here. That's, that's out of here, terrible. For real. That's terrible. No, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this question, right? You talking to somebody, going through the same thing, similar situations that you did, what would you tell them? And they haven't had that aha moment yet. Mm. Young dude. Basically to put his best foot forward and look at the bigger picture. Uh, One thing people tend to do is, um, well, it's hard, is to see the big picture when you in the picture, mm. so to speak. Um, so just having that, that vision, like as a young kid, a lot of kids don't have that, you know what I mean? So I would really just tell them, man, you got to look more towards the future and start planning for that. Yeah. Live it one day at a time, but still think about where you headed and where you're trying to go. You know what I mean? So if you think about that, your steps is different, you know what I mean? Versus just, I'll oh, just living it. I oh, just, you know, going with the flow, going, you know what I mean? Can't live like that, man. You got to you gotta start planning for the future. Yeah, I think, you know, Big Adam talked about purpose over pleasure. Like, you got to live for a purpose. And I think a lot of the guys and women that we've had on the show, when they get caught up, it's because they're living for pleasure. They're living for instant gratification, mm-hmm. money, you know, material things. Mm-hmm. Instead of like a higher purpose, your higher purpose Seems like you love helping people, right? You love, love daughter. the journey you're on. You love your daughter. You're living for something you know, for with sure. a bigger purpose than just, I got to get mine. You yeah. know, people going to know who Reggie Cole is, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like yeah, you're living with a purpose. And I completely agree. And I just want to reiterate, like, yeah, if you are young out there, if you don't have a purpose, you're like a ship without a sail tossed yeah. back and forth at the sea, right? Because you don't know where you're going and you got no plan. You're going to get swept away. Yeah, you're that's the big away. word, purpose, trying to find that. Yeah, that's big, for sure. Yeah, because there's so many, there's so many lost kids, mm-hmm. young men, young women, just floating listlessly through life. 
Yeah. You know, and they need to hear and see these type of examples. You know, it's not always about four walls in the sink. That's, we say that all the time. You know, yeah. everybody's prison isn't four walls in the sink. And for you to get up out of that so soon, not even so soon, but just to get out of it without having to go through these things yeah. is a blessing. And so since you got through it, I'm like, man, you got to reach back and, you know, well, tell uh, them that don't know, look, bro, this is what you got to look forward to. Bursky fit, you know? Yeah. Great father. Great man. Yeah. Better you options. Know, better options. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole... A man needs to have purpose, right? You know, one one thing one of my pastors told me, a man needs to die with his work boots on. Because we got to be working towards something always. If you don't have that purpose, you're not working towards something. You know what I say, that uh, idle hands of the devil's workshop? Yes. Right? You got nothing to do. You start screwing around. You're getting into trouble. And there's so many men, even grown-ass men, right? Yeah. You know, you call them boys who can shave because they're not real men yet. They have no. no purpose. They're going around who can I sleep with? What can I do? How can I get money real quick? It's like, dude, pursue your passion. Yeah. The money will come. Yeah. That will come. Like you saying, you're trying to evolve your mind right now and grow your mind and be a better dad and all those things, the, the money and all that will come, but you got to pursue your purpose. Will's purpose right now is to help formerly incarcerated bring awareness. This podcast post P that's post Will's P, whole, that that's his whole purpose. brand that keeps him on track, right? It you know really I see does. Will? The only thing that keeps him on track is is his purpose. And my purpose, obviously, is how can I give back to the community and this everything I do. This guy's doing incredible things. So, and I, that and shirt I, he got right there? Yeah. Just so who, who doesn't know, if you guys want to watch this and donate to TG, these shirts right here, and you don't have to buy a shirt to donate yeah. because these shirts... We have, man, Stephen, tell him, man, come on. 100% of the proceeds of buying these shirts are going towards building a house for a homeless family in Mexico. And, you know, that just goes back to one of my purposes, helping people, building a great gym with a great environment so people like Bursky can train and have a business out of there and build up other people, right? That's one of my purpose. So hearing your story, hearing our trainer's story, it's like, man, I'm living my purpose because Bursky's living his purpose through our gym. Yeah, Will's just, living uh, his purpose through our gym. So for me, I'm like, all right, that's purpose right there. You know what I mean? I'm just not like, man, I want to get rich off this gym. <laughs> yeah. the, these things that keep me going is your story right now. And and that's what I love. Like your your purpose is driving. And I know it's going to come, that bursty fit. It's going to yeah. be big. Yeah. And you, you keep you keep pursuing that purpose. You know, your daughter's be like, that's my dad, yeah, Reg for Cole. Sure, for sure. Right? For sure. You know, and so I love, I love just, you know, three guys sitting around the table with purpose given hopefully someone else listening to this find your purpose find your purpose word of the day purpose <laughs> purpose i love it yeah for so, sure what's up man what's the future for bursky fit what's going on with you let us know um like i was telling my boy here i um i just got goes to get this out here to where it's eventually a household name okay you know in the fit industry you know what i mean so whatever that may 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 be you know what i mean maybe it'll be a gym one day i don't know you know what i mean um i just want it out there man no limitations yeah don't put me in no box so how can people find you um instagram all right what well, instagram or at tg chula you can find me there all the time okay uh, <laughs> afternoon evening sometimes the morning chula. he's always there instagram what's your what's your instagram name uh bursky fit b-r-s-k-i-i underscore fit Okay, I think it's right up under his name right there. Oh, there it go. Yeah. <laughs> Bursky Fit, man. Thank you for coming through. Man, it was Appreciate a pleasure. It. Thank you for sharing your story. Sure. I know it's going to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, it's another great episode. My name is Will. I'm Steven. And this, this is, is the Post P Chronicles. Chronicles. Yes, sir.